Hello guys, welcome back. This is video two and we're going to look at how we create some graphics for our contact instruments in this video. Um, even if you have no intention of creating your own graphics for your instruments, it's still useful to know the limitations that contact places on GUI graphics so that you can inform your graphic designer because not all graphic designers have worked with contact. So we'll look at graphics for the instrument skin and the three main contact controls, which are sliders, buttons, and menus. Notice I don't mention uh, knobs there, and you'll find out shortly why that is. All right, guys, let's begin with the instrument skin. It's also sometimes called the wallpaper. If you go into the study materials folder that came with this lesson, you should have a subfolder called GUI exercises. So if you double click on that, and go inside it, then go into the resources folder and then into pictures. Now in here we've got a few files but we'll ignore them for now. Go into the folder that says underscore templates and these are the Photoshop templates that I've included for you to use. Now if you don't have Photoshop, when I say to open one of these templates you can just open the, um, what, what, the PNG equivalent and this skin PNG is actually a template that you can use in any graphics application so if you don't have Photoshop don't worry there is a template included for you too. So I'm going to open up the skin template in Photoshop and it's opened on my other monitor so I shall just drag it across there we go. So you can use this template or the PNG version as a starting point when creating your um, skins. Now in contact 4, the skin can have a maximum height of 418 pixels. So the top 68, you can see them marked on this diagram. Let me zoom in a bit in Photoshop. So the top 68 pixels here cover the instrument header. This is the instrument header. You see this in all contact instruments. The rest of the skin, this gray area, is up to a maximum of 350 pixels high. And this is where we place all our control graphics. We can skin this top section as well. If you don't want it to be gray, we can skin that. And this instrument icon thing up here, there is a way to get rid of that as well. So this is contact for this is a maximum of 418 pixels. That's the 350 plus the 68. And in contact five, the height is greater than um, this you can have a much taller interface I can't remember what that figure is but I'm sure you can find it in the contact 5 scripting reference manual the skin should contain all the design elements you want for your instrument and you should include any static labels you want now what do I mean by static labels well I'll bring the instrument back up so this fella here where it says sustain we can change him he's a dynamic label these values here, which change when we move the, uh, the knobs, those are dynamic labels. They're dynamic because they move. Whereas these things, where it says legato, offset, fade, um, on and off, um, all of those are static. They don't change. These are static labels. So these should be part of the skin. You don't want to be adding them on a separate graphics in, um, through contact scripting because it's just a pain to do it and, and there's no need. So yes, all these static things should be part of the background image, part of the skin. The static labels are usually pieces of text or icons that you'll place on your interface to indicate what a particular set of controls do, just like in the Acme Fiddle. So although we could create them using several individual images and then overlay them inside contact using our script, it's far easier to just add them to the skin in Photoshop or whatever graphics package you're using. Now, as well as adding the static labels to your interf to your skin, you should also add placeholders for any dynamic labels. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me bring up the skin for the Acme Fiddle. Just find it in this folder somewhere. So this is actually what the skin looks like. I'll bring up contact again. So remember, these things here are dynamic labels where it says um, the uh, where it's got the decibel readout there and the fade value there and the offset value there. Those are dynamic labels and this sustained staccato thing, that's a dynamic label. So on the skin, you put the static placeholders for those labels. So you can see here we've got this bit of paper nail, nailed to some boards. That's a placeholder. We've got these 
sort of in um, indented bits of wood. These are placeholders. So all these are actually part of the background skin. Another graphic I had to create for this instrument was um, some dynamic text for the um, the articulation. So that's this sustained staccato, and you can see there's two bits of text in one image. And I'm going to show you how we can make what are essentially animation frames and just show the particular part of an image that we want to see or a particular frame of animation. So you see it swaps between the two. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for a quick overview of um, the skin. So hopefully you can see what's going on there. Dynamic labels, anything that changes, we just create placeholders for and static labels we stick on the skin and apart from that as long as you follow these guidelines here 632 wide 350 um, high plus your extra 68 up there as long as you don't go outside those guidelines you can do whatever you want in here as far as design is concerned and come up with some really um, really cool designs this skin took me I don't know an hour or two to put together just um, lots of stock images and uh, messing around in Photoshop really but you can get as creative as you want um, if you saw the first two lessons you'll remember that the wallpaper skins I did for those were just very um, basic and that was just because we weren't focusing on GUI stuff so I figured I'd keep the background simple so that we could focus on the topic of the lesson Okay guys, that's about it for this video. If you head over to video three, we'll have a look at doing the graphics for sliders and knobs. So I'll see you there.